And today I'm going to detail how regular daily intake of niacin, and ideally the original flushing form of niacin, also known as nicotinic acid, supports muscle vitality. And much of niacin's muscle benefits actually stem from the supportive actions of the critical coenzyme nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, or NAD, for which niacin is the most direct precursor. And while you could just take supplemental NAD, I'm going to show you why regular flush niacin is actually the better choice for daily muscle maintenance. But first, let's look at how daily exercise supports NAD. Mitochondria depend on a steady supply of NAD to produce our universal energy currency, adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. NAD levels decline with age, partly due to the chronic systemic inflammation known as inflammagene, which stems from many sources, including cellular senescence. Regular exercise, particularly resistance training, reverses this age-related NAD decline, and instead increases NAD content in muscle cells exponentially, along with overall sirtuin activity, and the activity of muscle citrate synthase, which is a direct reflection of optimal mitochondrial density in skeletal muscle. Maintaining high levels of glutathione, our master detoxifying antioxidant, is also a vital part of muscle maintenance, as glutathione improves aerobic muscle metabolism, and more efficient energy production during exercise, which result in reduced muscle fatigue both during and after exercise. And it's important to remember here that NAD governs the functions of our antioxidant metabolic master regulator, NRF2, or nuclear factor urethroid 2. And NRF2 is then responsible for the actions of the two glutathione synthesizing metabolic enzymes, glutamate cysteine ligase and glutathione synthetase. The dysregulation of blood sugar metabolism in insulin is unfortunately a well-known part of advanced aging. And when insulin resistance occurs in our muscle cells, there's a sharp reduction in protein synthesis, or the process of producing new muscle protein, along with a concurrent increase in muscle tissue degradation, both of which obviously contribute to the age-related muscle mass deterioration known as sarcopenia. NAD is the direct fuel source for the metabolic proteins known as sirtuins that constantly repair DNA, mitochondria, and telomeres, and one sirtuin in particular, known simply as sirtuin-1, is is especially helpful for supporting insulin sensitivity and proper insulin secretion. One way that inflammation increases as we age is through the increased proliferation of inflammatory cytokines like tumor necrosis factor alpha. And in the muscles, consistently activated tumor necrosis factor alpha, like insulin resistance, also contributes to a reduction in muscle fiber protein synthesis, while also promoting the decomposition of the critical striated muscle cells that enable voluntary movement, breathing, and even posture. Well, this is obviously a concern for older people, as all of these effects are definitely part of sarcopenia. This is also a clear example of how consistent use of regular flushing niacin benefits the muscles directly, because niacin is well known for sharply reducing tumor necrosis factor alpha. Yet another contributing factor to the deterioration of sarcopenia is capillary regression, or impaired regeneration of the capillaries. Regular exercise, particularly resistance training, counteracts this regression by stimulating angiogenesis, or the growth of new blood vessels from older, damaged ones. And this is particularly critical for the capillaries, which are our smallest and most prevalent blood vessels. And here is yet another area where original flushing niacin is extremely helpful because two of niacin's most restorative benefits are its restoration of the anterior lining of the blood vessels and also niacin's systemic optimization of angiogenesis. Can you see just how critical these factors are to optimal muscle vitality, especially for an older person? Niacin also contributes to the regeneration of muscle tissue itself through niacin's support of colon regulatory T-cell activity and also by increasing the number and effectiveness of white blood cells like basophils and neutrophils. All of these either secrete and or enhance the epidermal growth factor ampharegulin, which initiates tissue regeneration through stimulating muscle stem cells called satellite cells. Again, the best, safest, and really the only form of niacin you should be using is the original flushing form, also known as nicotinic acid. If you're new to using niacin, then definitely start with a low dose, like 100 milligrams or less if you're extremely sensitive, and definitely take your niacin with food to reduce the sensation of the flush even further. You will eventually grow accustomed to the dose you're taking, and when that happens, you'll no longer flush at that particular dose. But again, you should still start with a low dose. 
While regular exercise, and particularly resistance training, is still the only definite solution for combating sarcopenia, I hope you now understand the many ways that regularly taking original flush niacin can also help. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzymental. Stay healthy.